Allah Khairan to um, you know, may Allah reward him for the good speech. Now we're um, we're open to um, questions um, regarding particularly this topic, but um, we also would like to say that um, we're open to some other Islamic related um, questions that you <coughs> might have and would like to raise to arise a tool. Um, that you would like to raise. Um, so, one from the floor. Break what? Break. <coughs> Let me shine now. Um, yeah, just going to the real reason that um, Western countries have uh, adopted more uh, view based on what people want is that not just because if you have it. Uh, strictly based on um, any sort of religious law that can be easy to be uh, misinterpreted. And so by having sort of a, a general consensus, there's less chance of that happening. Um, I don't think that's true. The idea might sound nice, but I don't think that's the reality. I believe, in fact, that I think. Uh, what is very, very interesting in this regard is referring to some of the ideas that people like Noam Chomsky have come out with, okay, um, about the mass media manufacturing consent. That really, I mean, if we just think about it, you take the average person in England and ask them, what do you think is right and what do you think is wrong? What do you think is good and what do you think is evil? What do you think is appropriate and what do you think is inappropriate? Think about those things. Now you tell me, from where did you get that information? From where did you get your ideas of right and wrong, good and evil, what you should do and what you shouldn't do? Think about it. Anyone? Tell me. Not Muslims, I don't want you to say the Qur'an, right? But your idea of good and evil, right and wrong, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, where did you get that information from? Who taught you those things? Where did you get that knowledge from? Anyone? Yeah. Your parents? Yeah, and? Public opinion. Uh, public opinion? Yeah, and? Media. The media. And? Come on. <laughs> School, your friends, your opinions. Okay, that's, that's where people get their ideas of right and wrong from. Government, media, parents, but their parents, where did they get their ideas of right and wrong from? Government, media, if you really think about it, okay, at least the Muslim can say, I've got a book here, right, and this book tells me, I don't have a Quran with me, I've got a book here, and this book, here, here it is, it's all written down. I mean, at least the Americans have got a constitution, although it doesn't seem to make any difference. They can just undermine it any time the George Bush comes along or whatever. But still, the Muslims say, I've got, a, here it is, written down. This is what God says is right and what is wrong. you got something to, but what have you got to refer to? Nothing. You've got to refer to The Sun, BBC, ITV, Channel 4. That's it. That's your point of reference, Tony Blair. Okay? Those are your points of reference. My friends, what do all my friends say? Oh, what are you saying, guy? Okay, they're bad. We'll say the same thing. Right? I mean, that's the, we have to really think about, okay, it's all very nice. If you're talking about a highly educated society, where everyone has studied philosophy and religion and, uh, and whatever, and all of those things, and every single one of them is making an extremely intellectual, informed decision, although I'd still say, what is that compared to the knowledge and the guidance of God, right? But still... That will be something, at least you could say, well, maybe you got something there, but what? Western society? Where most people are more interested, right? In, you know, who won the latest football match? Did, is Arsenal going to get win the FA Cup or is it going to be Man United or this? So that's what people are interested in, going down to the pub and having a beer. I'm sorry. That's the fact. And who's going to be on page three tomorrow? That's the average person in this democratic society. They're just ruled and manipulated by who? These ideas that people have are a product of what? You see, look at the Gulf War. Look at the, this is a perfect example. I've been observing, uh, not the Gulf War, this now, this war that they're going to want to start against Iraq. When it all started off, it was like 
80, no, like 58% or maybe even more of people thought Saddam Hussein did not have any weapons of mass destruction. That's what the weapons inspectors said, right, from before. They said he's got nothing. 99% of his weapons are gone and he's got like maybe 1% and even those are chemicals that are going to deteriorate after these 10 years. He's got nothing. That's what the last lot of weapons inspectors have said. Now, it's like, and that starts off, most people thought Saddam hasn't done it, but propaganda, propaganda, day after day, day after Al-Qaeda, chemical attack, this, such and such, weapon inspectors, and what do they do? Boom, they get brainwashed, 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 and now it's all turned around. Now most people do think he's got weapons of mass destruction. In America, okay, in America, they think that Saddam Hussein is a direct threat to that. They're going out and buying tape to stick on their windows and boarding in their windows that they think Saddam himself is going to send missiles over to blow up America. This is what these people think. So, if this is the mentality of those people who are so uninformed, if before September the 11th you asked them to show them where New York was on a map, they couldn't even do it. That's most Americans didn't even know where New York was. Are these the people you think are going to be entrusted to make some... No, I, I'm sorry, I just don't agree. This isn't democracy. It's the illusion of democracy. First of all, you tell people, this is what you want. Do you want it? Yes, we do. That's what's happening. You know, you want this? That? Yeah? That's it. You know? So really, it's just like leading the sheep to, sh the, the, leading the sheep to slaughter. What is really going on is what? Is it they want us to worship them. Who's they? Who's they is Nike, Gap, multinational corporations, big businesses, the media, Disney, <coughs> Warner Brothers, all the rest of it, Microsoft. That, those are the ones that want us to worship them, put our trust in them, put our hope in them that directs all our efforts and our attentions to them and their ideals. Who benefits from the materialistic philosophy? The idea that there's no God, you're just an evolved monkey after all. Right? You and me, what are we? What are we? Evolved apes. How do you make a monkey happy? Give monkey banana, give man monkey woman monkey, give monkey something to play with, you got a happy monkey. So what are we? We're, no, but we're laughing, but this is the truth. So if you, look, if you remember I said in the beginning, right, if I said in the beginning that in fact, and this is why I said this is an interesting thing we could get diverted when we come back to it, this is what we're going to get diverted by. How come justice is so important to human beings if we're just like evolved monkeys? If we're just really animals and there's just the material, how come justice is so important? How, how come all these needs that we have that are not material needs at all? Okay? And this makes us understand that there's a lot more to the human being than that. But you know what? They want to keep us miserable. They want to keep us astray. They want to keep us enslaved. Because why? We'll keep on buying their products, watching their movies, buying their magazines, drinking their drinks, going on their holidays, etc, etc, etc. You know, democracy is just a nice way to do that. So, Every system is, of course, open to exploitation. But I don't think, I think a religious system, yes, it can be exploited, yes, it can be abused, that is true. Okay? But that depends on the religious system. But the fact is that if you've got a book, and you're telling people to refer to that book, remember, in the Middle Ages, the only people who read the book, the Bible, were the priests. You're not even allowed to read the Bible. If you were a common person, first of all, you didn't know how to read, because the only people who knew how to read were the monks. And if you wanted to study how to read and write, you had to join a monastery. You had to join the priesthood. It's the only way you get to learn to read and write. And if you didn't work part of the priesthood, you could be, you could be killed for reading the Bible. That's not the case with the Islam. Every Muslim should know how to read the Qur'an. The Qur'an has always been in the hands of people, not in the hands of a few. So at the end of the day, we have something we can go back to. You know, so it depends again on the religion. 
Okay, those things do depend. So, you know, of course, I admit without any doubt that every system is open to abuse and exploitation. But I would say, if you just average it out, no. I would say the system of Islam is going to be the best one. It's going to be superior, even with the weaknesses of the human beings, by far. But, you know, that's just something to think about, really, my opinion. Yes,